Hi there and welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and staying healthy. My name is Finn and I am an actuarial student with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. In this video I'm going to be explaining what PPD is, the approach I've taken to completing it, and giving you a few tips on how to be efficient in completing your PPD. So PPD actually stands for personal and professional development and for you to become an actuary or an associate you need to have completed a work experience aspect in your training. So what the IFOA does is that it uses your PPD submissions to check that the work you're doing on a daily basis is actually helping you to become a competent actuary. So in the PPD scheme, there are three objectives that you need to fulfill and under each objective, there are what are known as competencies. Each competency will be given a number of credits to it. For completing it and the number of credits that each competency is awarded depends on their relative importance of the particular competency. But every year you actually have to meet a minimum number of credits and overall you'll need a minimum number of credits to qualify as either an associate or a fellow actuary. So if you joined before the 2nd of January 2019 like I did, you'll need 10 credits and one year of experience for you to become an associate and you will need 20 credits and three years of experience for you to become a fellow. If you joined after the 2nd of January 2019, you will need 15 credits and two years of experience to become an associate and you'll need 20 credits and three years of experience for you to become a fellow. So basically the requirements for you to become a fellow have remained the same, but those for you to become an associate have become a bit stricter. In addition to your credits for meeting the objectives, you're also going to need two hours of formal learning each year. These hours of formal learning can come from attending meetings from your local actuarial society, from any business and technical presentations that you've been a part of, any company arranged seminars or training sessions, and any other seminars on actuarial matters. So now to just drill down on these three objectives that you need, they're actually effective communications, problem solving, and professionalism. Just to give you an example of a competency under the effective communications objective, there's one way you're required to present the results of actuarial work to an informed but non-technical audience. The wonderful thing is that for each competency, they'll give you examples of activities that you could have done in order to help you fulfill that competency under that objective. An example of an informed but a non-technical audience in the example that's given in the guide is any colleagues in your company that are not in the actuarial department. So let's say you're explaining an actuarial concept to someone from finance, that's definitely an example that you could cite as having met your PPD competency. Another one could actually be presenting the results of actuarial work to an external client that had initially requested the work. For each competency, you'll need to give a brief description in about 250 words of the activity that you undertook. And then you also need to give a learning outcome, which is a much longer section in about 1,024 words. Every person actually has a unique PPD deadline, and this deadline is determined by the date that you joined the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. It's actually the day before the anniversary of that date. So in my case, for example, I joined the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries on the 9th of May, 2018. So my PPD year actually runs from the 9th of May to the 8th of May in the following year. Any activity that you're going to describe in trying to achieve your PPD credits has to have fallen in that time period of your current PPD year. I feel like I've given you a fair introduction on what PPD is and what the requirements you're supposed to meet are. I'm going to move on now to describing my actual PPD submission. So the 8th of May 2021 is actually the end of my third year with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. In my first year, I submitted three credits. In my second year, I did six. So now I've got a total of nine credits. That means I'm one credit shy to become an associate and 11 credits away from becoming a fellow. I'm actually targeting fellowship by year end. So that means that I need to get 20 credits by the end of this PPD submission, as in I need to get 11 credits by Saturday submitted. The first thing that I want to do is to go through the objectives and competencies mini guide just to check which objectives I'm targeting for this year 
and to confirm which ones I actually haven't done out of the compulsory ones that are required for you to become a fellow or an associate. I'll also have to do a quick tally of whether the competencies I've chosen are going to add up to the 11 credits that I need for the year. As I do this, I'll also decide on which activity I'm going to base my submission for each competency on. I'll leave a link to the page that describes PPD for you to be able to access the guides on how to fill in your activity descriptions, your formal learning, your uh, learning outcomes, your PPD competencies and objective mini guide, all that good stuff, and the actual institute and faculty's description of what PPD is and what you need to do. In all my submissions, I've been using this word template that I created that helps me just to scope out what I'm going to fill in on the website, and it also helps me to keep track of the number of words that are required whether I've gone over or it's extremely under the required number of words. It's possible that I don't know how to use the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website correctly, and if that's the case, please let me know, but I'm actually unable to see my submissions from 2019 and 2020. So having my own copies of those submissions has really helped me. At this point, I'll also decide on the event or events that I'm going to be using as my formal learning activities. So if you guys are interested in using my template, I've left a link to it in the description box below. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. So the next step in my PPD process is to go into each competency and describe in detail each activity and each learning outcome. I'll then send the document through to my supervisor for him to go through my submissions and then we can maybe discuss on the points that he feels I need to add or subtract from what I said. Once that step is done and I've got my feedback, I'll then go back into my account on the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website and log in my PPD submission for that year. And that's my submission done. I'm moving on to the tips that I have for you guys because you know I always have your back and I've got you covered with them tips. The first one I've already touched on to some extent, but it's to keep a document of documents with your previous submissions just so that you know exactly what you submitted before and you're not repeating the same competency over and over. The second one, which I've actually never implemented in the past three years that I've been submitting PPD, is to try to spread it over the year instead of just waiting for the last six days before your deadline. For me, it always feels like such a horrible chore to try and fill it in right now. And in the run-up to exams, it was actually giving me anxiety because every time I would sit down and try to study, I would just think, oh my gosh, as soon as exams are over, I have to do this PPD thing. Realistically speaking, I could have actually done my PPD submission in the lead up to the September results that were released in December. Because to be honest, I used to binge watch Modern Family. That didn't help me. It's not helping me now and I'm crying about all the time I wasted. And in all honesty, almost all the activities that I'm using for my submission had already taken place by that time. Another tip is that if you're targeting fellowship in three years, then try to spread your credits evenly over the submission periods. So instead of doing the 3, 6, 11 that I did, that puts unnecessary pressure on you. I probably should have done 6, 6 so that at least I'd have 8. Or if I had done slightly more than 6 in each of the previous submissions, I would have even less to do now. In each of those prior years, I actually had enough activities to describe several competencies so I realistically could have filled in more competencies then. But because I was lazy to type out all those activity descriptions and formal learning outcomes, it just, I didn't do it and I shot myself in the foot. But I made my bed, so I need to go lie in it. My last comment, which is actually not a tip, is that ACID does something a bit different. So if you're writing exams with the Actuarial Society of South Africa, and you would like to find out something more specific to you, then please drop me a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you want me to do the research and give you a video on that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.